Okay, so let's take a look at a different method for solving quadratic equations. And the method here is we're going to call that the square root using the square root property method. So we're going to try to solve uh, many of these uh, equations here using the square root property. Now in class, I have already, men already mentioned about before you are, before you can enable yourself to use the square root property to solve the equation, you must bring your equation into the ordinary form. Now I have to remind you again, the ordinary form is going to be one perfect square. Now, the, the capital X I'm using here can represent anything. The point is we have one perfect square and equals to a number on the right hand side of the equation. This is the ordinary form. Before you can proceed with the square root property, you always need to bring your uh, equation into the ordinary form. One single perfect square equals a number on the other side. Ordinary form. Okay, so now let's see how you can do this once again. Some more examples besides those uh, examples we did in class. So, now in my example number one, I would like to solve the equation here is going to be 3x squared equals 27. All right, so now if you're looking at this equation, what I'm seeing here is it's not quite at the ordinary form yet. For the reason being, I do see a perfect square. The, the x squared itself is a perfect square. However, this perfect square here is not single. It's a three times x squared. And that equals the number on the, the right-hand side. So what I need to do is I need to bring this equation back to the ordinary form. So now, to obtain the ordinary form, I must divide both sides by 3. Now I'm bringing my equation back to the x squared equals 9. Here at this point, my equation is in what so-called the ordinary form. So now, to proceed with this, at this point now, the square root property is going to say, the left-hand side, the side that contains a perfect square, you can just simply do the x. Ignore the square completely. Just now, simply the x, the whole expression itself. And now equals to, now you take square root on the right hand side, the square root of 9, and do not forget, plus and minus square root of 9, meaning it's going to produce two different uh, answers for square root of 9. So what, and by the way, square root of 9 equals 3, so my real solutions would be, my real solutions would be x equals plus and minus 3, meaning 1x equals 3, and then the other x equals negative 3. I have found for myself two solutions for x. So we're solving for x in these equations. So let's try it again with these uh, with these square root property problems. So now in my example, in my example number two, okay, you would like to solve, and my equation here is going to be 5x squared plus 1 equals 51. Right? Now, it's time to you know, get a hands on some of those problems where you, you encounter with square root that you cannot reduce the square root. You, you, can't, you don't know how to check the, the, uh, the, the square root of those numbers. So let's say in this problem, my equation starting out, we're, we don't have the ordinary form. I do not have one perfect square equals a number. And in, in, indeed, I have 5x squared plus 1 equals 51. So I need to bring my equation here back into the ordinary form. So I need to subtract 1 from both sides, and that gives me 5x squared equals 50. At this point here, I'm almost at ordinary form because here I have, I see a, a perfect square x squared, but it's not singular, it's not a single x squared. So I, it's multiplied 5 by 5, so I need to divide both sides by 5, and that brings me down to x squared equals 10. Now I have a now at this point, I have a, an equation, a quadratic equation in ordinary form, making it ready to use the square root property to solve my equation. So the square root property is going to say, all you have to do is just simply get rid of the square on the left-hand side. So now it remains just x. Now before it was x squared, now it's just simply x, no square. Equals to, on the right-hand side, you're going to do square root of 10. Don't, don't forget, plus and minus square root of 10. What I'm talking about here is that we want to find two different roots of 10, two different square roots, a positive square root of 10 and a negative square root of 10. And by the way, square root of 10 is an irreducible square root, so we cannot find, I mean, without a calculator, we cannot find how much square root of 10 is. So my real answer is now would be, I'm leaving it the same way it is, a positive, positive square root of 10 and the other x value, negative square root of 10. 
or whatever the value for square root of 10 would be. And that's how you solve any other equations. And in this equation, the, the, the highlighted point here is that we sometimes we end up with, um, with irre irreducible roots, then we just leave the answer as the way it is. In example number three, in example number three, we would like to solve two x squared minus five equals negative 55. And, and let's try to solve this equation. Once again, my equation here is not ready to solve by square root property yet. For the reason being, it's not in the ordinary form. So I need to bring my equation back to the ordinary form. So now to do that, I must add five to both sides, leaving a two x squared equals a negative 50 on the right hand side. And now I'm not quite at the, the ordinary form yet. I need one more step because I only want one singular square. So to obtain my single square, I need to divide both sides here by two and that leaves me x squared equals negative 25. And now at this point, I am at my ordinary form where I'm, what I'm seeing here is one singular x squared the square of the x, that's a one perfect square, equals negative 25. So I have a perfect square equals a number. And so now, what I can do at this point, the left hand side, I can just simply ignore this square notation. On the right hand side, I need to do square root of negative 25, and then with a plus and minus, we're doing two different groups. Plus and minus, a positive and negative, square root of negative 25. Now, we have learned, back in, uh, intermediate algebra, or I, I might have talked about this in class, but uh, we can also take square root of a negative number, and that would be, now, square root of negative 25 is the same as 5i, and then you have plus and minus 5i. So really my two answers are x equals positive 5i, x equals negative 5i. So those are my two answers. Now, once again, the, the I here explains for whenever you have a negative, when you try to take a, uh, the square root of a negative number, then you always, your answer always end up with an I. You, know, you, you will find like more detailed explanation in, in, in class examples. 